Alright. I'm Manslave and along with I'm Manslave and along with me is the disposable human duty. It is uh, 7.48 p.m. January 30th, or, uh, 2013, and I'm driving along this road, and we had just got done listening to Taylor Swift's song titled Trouble, or, you know, I Knew Your Trouble When I Walked In, um, you know, that song, and um, so it was just a few minutes ago, and as I was driving, um, I, you know, basically around this part of the road, I was realizing that... Um, it's like that I... Okay, when she was bitching about, you know, um, um, oh gosh, through the song where she's like, um, when she says, and I realized the blame was on me, um, you know, because I knew you were trouble when you walked in. It reminded me of that, uh, <clears throat> that, um, IUS, um, uh, the IUS Feminist Alliance flyer. Remember? Yeah. If we speak up, then you know it's like then we're loud. And if and if like, you know the bitching that they do, right? Yeah. Where it's like, well, if we do this, then we're insignificant. But if we do that, then man, you know, and it's like, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's bitching whining because they don't want to perceive in any way other than as a goddess. Like if if they show any error in their judgment, they're afraid of what people will think of them. It's like everyone makes mistakes, except in your case, you make them on purpose. Um. So anyway, I was I was listening to this Taylor Swift song that was on the radio. Like I said, just a couple minutes before I made this, well, it was around 7:40 p.m., 7:42 p.m., something like that. Now it's 7:50 p.m. So anyway, <clears throat> um. So I'm listening to it, and. You know, and, it, and it, the Taylor Swift song of you know I knew your trouble when you wa- uh, when I walked or when you walked in, it reminded me of that. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, the IUS Feminist Alliance uh, flyer, where basically the feminist you know the feminists they bitch about the troubles that women face or whatever, but really a lot of it's perceived, uh, and it's basically. Anyway, it's basically like a spoiled brat child syndrome. Would you agree? Yeah, pretty much. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, so in the song, basically, apparently Taylor Swift is making uh, bad judgment decisions because she knew the guy was going to be trouble when, when he walked in the room or whatever, and yet she still basically got with him and was in a relationship or whatever. So, you know, it's about, you know, women being um, uh, trapped within, you know, lackluster, um, you know, uh, sub store, uh, you know, like being trapped or confined to a lackluster sub fairy tale type of relationship. Would you agree? Pretty much. I mean, it's just simply, it's simply just. Still not taking responsibility for actions, even though she's... It's like... It, it, I don't know. It's She's admitting that she made a fucking mistake, but at the same time, she's asking that everyone should, like, pretend that she didn't do that. I'm, like, she didn't do it, and then... She wants people to, <clears throat> like, feel sorry for her and, Like you know, a damsel in distress yeah, type of scenario. come save her and, like, you know, make sure that she feels comfortable and safe and, you know, secure in her, you know, actions... But at the same time, she knows that she shouldn't be treated that way. She knows that she should be treated like a fucking idiot. So, uh, what I noticed in here is it shows a type of female mentality. And because this keeps... Because of the prefer, because of how prevalent this type of uh, <clears throat> mentality so much surfaces. Like I mentioned, you know, the, 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 uh, the volcano and the lava tube... Um, type of situation between you know the, the the relationship between feminism and female nature is like a um, is like a, ro- a lava tube and a uh, and a volcano um, and <clears throat> so um, anyway y- you notice this and it's the you know and I got to think I got to thinking, like, what happened thousands of years ago when men and women got together and established the human family? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
they, what I'm getting at is women feel like they are enslaved by their prime biological directive, and that's why feminism seeks to try to liberate women from the prime biological directive. And once again, like I was talking to you <clears throat> about how you know a woman can only uh, well, it goes into the basically the evolutionary showdown type of subject matter, like I had talked to you on the phone about uh, like an hour ago, and um, where. And I got to think, and it's like, where did it go wrong? Like, like what went on when when males and females first initially started getting together? You know what I'm saying? And, and forming the human family. Um, so anyway, um, you see this. Like, women, the only thing they've really historically had to offer was reproduction. And then it's like they resent their situation that they that they were, you know biologically put in. What do you think about that? Sounds about right to me. They don't want to admit... Well, they they don't want to accept that generally they... If they don't work... Not not even work towards it, but if they don't... Provide? Provide something other than vagina that that's all they're going to be. They don't want to accept that that's how things are. I mean, fuck, I, I know that, you know, if I don't have an interesting personality and I'm not attractive, no one's going to be want to be around me, so... Alright. <clears throat> you want me to wait here or something? Alright, uh, he wants me to wait here. Um, but see, <clears throat> th these are the types of things that me and the disposable human doing, we, we study. Um, now, we're, um, we had just arrived at our destination of, like, whatever. Because um, uh, I had just picked him up. Uh, right before I started making this recording, I just picked him up from his house and brought him into town because I had to go into town also. Um... <clears throat> Um, but, I mean, you notice, see, we analyze this stuff. We just don't have a conclusion. We, we try to figure out why women are like this because we originally thought that if we served women and treated them well and all that, then they would reward us with, you know, some type of happy life, you know, and we would win female approval and feel like we've, um, like we've managed to be a, su a successful person uh, in terms of, you know, what we did with our lives. Well, you know, anyway, not mon not necessarily monetarily successful, but, you know, in, in the sense of a personal character. <clears throat> but, you know, the, the female seems to be... You know, the, the, um, it's like, you know, in the sense of, um, well, you also see the women, the woman tries to have it all. It's like she's not satisfied with her place in society, but yet at the same time, men can and are expected to stoically just deal with it, you know, the, to deal with their own place in society of being the worker drone, the disposable male, um, you know, and see the differential is what we are focusing on between <clears throat> the male and the female. And the reason why is because we were brought up from childhood believing that equality is the way things should be. And it turns out that we were sold a lie. Uh, women don't want equality. They want preferential treatment. And they use the they use the Trojan horse of equality to basically sneak in and invade, um, well, to basically, well, they usurp from men, they, they invade <clears throat> so many aspects of a man's life, and they really, it's, uh, women are like a con artist, you know, they use confidence tricks and this and that, they make the man believe that she is capable of functioning on his level, <clears throat> And whatever it takes, because the female is the predator within the porcelain doll. <clears throat>